Let me make sure I am proper for the occasion. Just call me Miss Lady Jackie for the entirety of this video. For the next three days, I am going to be taking you guys back to 1813 and eating like the Bridgertons. I will be living like them. I will even be dressing like them. I am going to promenade in the park later. I also was invited to the social ball of the season. So I must make haste and start with the very first course of the day, breakfast. I'd also like to thank Shonda Rhimes for letting us use the set that they actually used on the show Bridgerton. Okay, so maybe I lied a little bit and I got this off of Amazon, but I almost had you guys fooled, right? So let's go ahead and get started by making some tea with milk, because that's how they drink it. Cheers to eating like the Bridgertons. Delightful. We have our very first suitor, Lord Nicholas of New Jersey. A true suitor will bring flowers. I can't get in. You might want to push it. The couch is in the way. I'm sorry. I'm filming. <laughs> My lady? Hello! My lady, you what? look great. The gloves, <laughs> the jewelry, you look perfect. Thank you. Okay, so I had to excuse Lord Nick because no suitors before breakfast. It's the most important meal of the day. So the first thing on our menu is porridge. I think porridge is a great way to start the day. It's going to fill you up and it's a healthy way to start. It's basically oatmeal, but not. I love it. They normally ate their eggs either boiled or poached. I know this is all about Bridgerton, but I really love Ever After with Drew Barrymore. And there's a scene where her stepmother eats an egg out of one of these egg holders. A lady of breeding ought never to raise her voice any louder than the gentle hum of a whispering wind. I think if I ate an egg like this at any royal uh, dinner or breakfast, they would kick me out of it. This is the Eloise way of opening an egg. Eloise doesn't like to follow the rules. She doesn't like to be quote unquote ladylike. Why must our only options be to squawk and settle or to never leave the nest? So I feel like Eloise would eat her egg like this. These gloves, I can't do anything without the gloves. Very sophisticated and I feel fancy. Cheers. There's something about eating the egg out of this egg holder that just makes it taste that much better. It's fancy, I feel sophisticated, other than the way that I broke apart the egg. Biscuits are a thing. They ate biscuits all day long. How did they eat their bacon with their hands and gloves? I just feel like that's very unsanitary to just grab with the glove. I, I think I have to take these off, it feels weird but this would be considered improper for a lady to show her hands. Do you guys remember that scene where Daphne and Simon were eating dinner for the first time as a married couple? And he was like, you don't need to be so formal here. And he takes off her glove. Scandalous. Does this meet your approval? Also, you guys, I found this jam called Jackie Jams. It's been, I haven't tried it yet, but just the fact that it's called Jackie Jams makes me really happy. Wonderful. Side of bacon. Wonderful. And then I have all these treats that I could eat throughout the day. We are off to a fantastic start. I'm excited to dive in and try lunch and dinner today. But first I must promenade in the park with Lord Nicholas of New Jersey. So the queen may not have called me perfect like she did to Daphne, but I do have many suitors that are bringing me lots and lots of flowers and we're about to go promenade together. <laughs> My lady. Lord Nicholas from New Jersey, very excited. I'm about to go promenade. Okay, so we are back. It is lunchtime. Hair has gone up because I have been slaving away in the kitchen. So I had to get it out of my face. And I feel like this is actually more Regency, Georgian era inspired hair look than the one I had earlier. I'm very excited about this black cherry water. It has all of these different kind of herbs, flowers, seeds and you just kind of like mash that all up and infuse it with still water and you top it off with rosemary and some mint. Queen Elizabeth actually loved this water and she said it's a really good 
replacement for alcohol and for kids to drink. Wow, it's a very vibrant, sweet water without any of the, the crap that we put in our juices and sodas these days. So they were definitely onto something. Let's move on to the queen cakes. So the queen cakes are made with currants. There's nutmeg in here. They also put rose water. And then they do add a dash of sherry wine. I've actually never made any like cakes or muffins. And as you guys can see, I maybe got a little too happy with the batter and put a little bit too much. But first of all, I just want to say I'm impressed with my very first muffin or queen cake. Came out really good. Nice and moist on the inside. I really love that you get these chewy currants throughout the muffin. Queen cakes actually remind me of that scene where Daphne and her mom are waiting for the queen. Her mom stole food off of the table. And what you're not supposed to do is eat before the queen eats. Like that is a rule of thumb. Mama, we were caught. If I were to be anybody in Bridgerton, when it comes to my appetite and how I eat, I would definitely be Daphne's mom. I'm like that type of person where I just like can't wait, you know what I mean? And if there's a rule to not eat until somebody gets there, best believe, I probably would break that rule and try to get away with it. Other things that they would eat are sweet pickles. I don't know why specifically sweet pickles when you're already eating so many things that are sweet. I think they are sticking with the theme during their lunchtime. Sweet, sweet, sweet. The sweet pickle, I think, is taking me over the edge during this lunchtime. Um, but I mean, pickles are pickles. All in all, I love lunchtime. I think all of these things were delicious and I truly enjoyed them. I'm excited to see what dinner will be like. Seven courses and all. All right, you guys, I'm headed out to a masquerade, AKA going to visit my Postmate guy outside. I ordered one of the dishes via Postmate because there's no way I could do all this cooking in one day, you guys. I need a little bit of help. She should be here soon. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, how are you? It's a nice day outside. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. You too, thank you. Y'all, she was unimpressed. She did not care about what I was wearing at all. Anyway, good to know that you can live your best dress up life and no one's going to judge you. Dinner time! I know it is not ladylike to shout at the table, but you guys, I'm hungry, I'm famished. I cannot wait to dive in. Normally at dinner, there could be anywhere from four to seven courses and you eat one thing at a time. And when I mean one thing at a time, I mean they even have a chorus of just vegetables. So that type of eating's not as fun for me. I like to see everything on my plate and go all in, but we're gonna do it the way that they do it, one course at a time. So the first course that we're diving into tonight is consomme. There's a lot of etiquette when it comes to eating, but soup is one of those things that you can do very, very wrong like eat wrong, slurp wrong. It's just one of those things that's like not necessarily the prettiest to eat, I guess you could say. This is nice. It's just um, what it reminds me of is just when I'm sick and my mom would bring me soup. This is one of those things where it's just standard soup. The next course is salmon. So normally in their second course, they'll do any type of fish, like a white fish, a salmon. And so I decided salmon because I love salmon so much. And I really do feel kind of like I am sitting down with the Bridgertons right now. In the first episode, you can see their dinner table was extravagant. And that was technically the first time that Simon and Daphne hung out with each other. Magic happens when you go out to eat on dates, y'all. Just saying. I feel like upper class and royals Really, we're living the life. So it's customary for the guest of the table, if he's a gentleman, to ask the lady to take wine after the soup and salmon. And then that's when it'd be appropriate to start drinking. Cheers, lords and ladies. <sighs> yeah, that's nice. That's real, real nice. I'm feeling regal. I'm feeling sophisticated. 
I'm feeling fancy. Who needs to go anywhere when you have this much elegance here at home? The next course, vegetables and mashed potatoes. It would be one or the other. I like to eat my salmon and mashed potatoes together. Like I like to mash the two together and I think it tastes fantastic. So it makes me sad that I just have to eat the mashed potatoes by themselves, which are delicious, but I wanna eat it all together, you know? Let me wash it down with some lime. Mm. Ah. You know who needs some wine to calm her nerves? Lady Featherington. She's always stressed out, always angry. I beg your pardon. I think a glass of wine would do her good. After the vegetable course, you move on to dessert. If you guys look at these clips from Bridgerton, they had pastries, croissants, queen cakes, macarons, everything. They had it during lunch and especially at dinner. They were extravagant. So this is my dessert. Really, there's just so much to choose from. I'm gonna go ahead and take these bad boys off because I'm gonna get down and dirty on this one. A macaroon to start off simple, okay? Cheers! Nothing like a nice chewy macaron. Macaron, macaroon, macaroon. This scotch that I found dates back to the 1800s, so I was like, yes, I have to try it. As much as Queen Victoria had this reputation of, you know, not being easily amused, not being so fun to be around. The woman did love her whiskey and she would try to get all of her subjects to drink Scotch whiskey. Oh yeah, and um, in England, it's whiskey without an E. Fancy. Pinkies up, here we go, cheers. That is delicious. Queen Victoria was definitely onto something. We also see the characters in Bridgerton sipping on some whiskey. It was Antony and Simon. They were in, we would call it a man cave in 2021. But back then I guess it was just kind of like the gentleman's like club area where they would play cards, smoke cigarettes and drink whiskey. People in the 1800s, early 1900s, really did live life right. If this is how they're eating and if this is how they're drinking, they had a good life. You now it's only day one. We have so many more courses for day two and day three, so I'm excited to keep diving in, but man, day one was great. Good morning, everybody. It is day number two, and I have to say, I slept like a baby last night. I think it was probably that scotch whiskey, but I woke up this morning re-energized, ready to go, ready to dive back into the 18th century, and first things first, you start off your day with some excellent tea. This tea is steaming. Quite like episode six of Bridgerton. So for breakfast today, we are having capers on rye with smoked salmon. And according to Nigel Burbrook's mother, this is great for fertility. Capers on rye every morning worked wonders for me. No, um, I don't know if I wanna eat this because I don't plan on having any babies anytime soon. So I will just proceed with caution. <laughs> So yummy. This is my uh, ideal type of breakfast too. It's light, it's healthy, and it'll give you everything that you need to start off the day with. We are off to a good start today and uh, meet you back later for lunch. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to take my lunch in the park by a lake. Lunch is basically just some fruit, some meat, and some bread, and I'm glad that they ate toast with their lunch because I'm about to feed the ducks with it. This is what they did back in the day. Just basked in the sun, fed some ducks. Oh, here they come, they're vultures. Look at this guy, he is coming. He's like, wait a minute. This is a lovely way to spend your afternoon. Doesn't this just make you feel like you're back in the 18th century? This is beautiful. There's nothing better than 
fresh squeezed lemonade on a hot day. I'm being very Nigel and Daphne right now drinking on my lemonade. So we actually see Daphne and Nigel drinking lemonade at that social ball. So lemonade popped up on the scene in Paris in 1630 and how they served their lemonade was fresh lemon juice, sparkling water, and honey. Of course, when you're using fresh lemon juice, it could be very tart. So to add that honey in there, it adds that sweetness. I just wanted to enjoy a lovely day in the park and there's children screaming. How inappropriate. You're supposed to leave the children at home. Oh Lord. I have to pull out the next course because I put some time into this pudding. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful. I know we're not a huge fan of Nigel Burbrook because he kind of made Daphne's life hell. But what I can say about him is that he is persistent and he never gives up. And that's exactly who I was embodying while I was making this pudding. I think my arm is legit about to fall off. But they did not have electric um, stirrers back then. So this is how they did it. Normally it takes, you know, two to three minutes to whip this up. I'm going on minute 10. Y'all, I've been at it. I don't know if I'm doing this wrong or not. It's hard work. Wow. It's kind of nice and airy, something that kind of gives you a little bit of the sweet taste that you want, but it's not gonna be super heavy like all those pastries we ate yesterday, which I love. Wow. This lunch was fantastic. I love that I'm at the park and I feel like I'm promenading right today because yesterday I definitely did not do it right. I was by a bus stop. This feels a lot more like I am in England during the 1800s and just, you know, sitting out, looking at ducks, waiting for a man to walk me around the park and court me. I'm living my best life. I love that I'm eating like it's 1813. I think this is how I want to continue my days even after this video is over. Let's say goodbye to lunch by feeding some ducks. They, get, they swim over here quick. Okay, we made it to dinner. Today has been a very eventful day. You guys know how in the show they call Daphne Diamond of the First Water. If I had a Diamond of the First Water of meals, this one would be it. It is perfect. I'm very excited about it. It is just next level. So today we're starting off with a julienne soup and basically what that just means is that the vegetables are julienne cut, so very thin sliced vegetables. Cheers to our first course for dinner. Mm, mm, mm. Yummy. I love vegetable soup so much. I can literally eat this whole thing. Course number two. I'm gonna have to pull up my sleeves for this one. I have been waiting for this all day long. A pound of crab. Oh yeah! <laughs> I love crab. Ooh. Oh ho, oh. Don't mind me, I'm just living my best life. Eating some. Crab. Do you see anybody at a royal dinner eating like this? <laughs> Probably not. I would never be invited to a royal dinner. They would invite me once and be like, Jackie has no table etiquette, never bring her back. I think that my love for crab is parallel to the love that Daphne and Simon share. It's complicated. It takes work. It looks like it's gonna be messy, but then when you dive in, after giving it some time and work, spending some time on it, when you open it up, it's beautiful, it makes you happy, and uh, it's like no other. It's perfect. Okay, now that we are done with the second course, it's time to wash all of that down with the claret wine, the, the moment I've been waiting for. You know when you just slave in the kitchen all day and you're just exhausted and you just want a glass of wine? 
Cheers. Cheers to the hard work of getting down in the kitchen. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, story time. Let's talk about the fact that back then, you had to be chaperoned in order to be with a male. And if you just so happen to be seen alone, whether you guys are six feet apart or super close, that all of a sudden that your reputation could be ruined, which I think is insane. Crazy story, I used to be in this really strict church where you, if you were dating somebody, you could not hang out with them alone. And if you did, it was called weasel dating. And so you're supposed to go on group dates all the time. Crazy time in my life, I will say. But Nick and I actually went to that church together and um, we snuck and hung out once. And all we did was go to dinner, but we were not supposed to go. We were supposed to be chaperoned by another couple and uh, they found out and they're like, why were you hanging out alone? What were you doing? Anyway, I say all that to say, um, you know, got a little bit of a flashback when I was watching Bridgerton when she was caught with Simon. Cheers to being able to hang out with the opposite sex without being chaperoned. It was a crazy story time. All right, now time to eat some veal. Bring on the meat. Lightly breaded veal with some garlic sherry sauce. Like Lady Whistledown, veal is a mystery to me. I have never had veal before and I've never made veal before. Charles. I really do feel like I'm having the best day ever. Like, what did I do to deserve to have such extravagant food? The next course is the vegetable course, my least favorite course. <laughs> Y'all don't need to know what broccoli tastes like or what the experience is like. It's broccoli. Dessert, please. I'm very excited about this dessert for today. It is called Petit Four. Hope I'm saying that right. I don't know if it's Petit Four. Petit Four. A petit four, petit four. You would think that it's like petit four because it actually comes in like four little um, cakes in a box, but it has nothing to do with four. Actually four in French means oven. It basically popped up in France in the 19th century and it quickly spread all throughout Europe as a delicacy during tea time. They ate fancy AF back then. On the outside you have like a hard chocolate, but on the inside you have layers of cake. Everything that they do is so beautiful. It's really an art. Everything that you see is super fancy. There's detail in it. These little cake bites, I mean, I can imagine on tea time, it's just very easy. You just grab one, pop it in your mouth, and you're good to go. Wow. You guys know what time it is. It is whiskey time! The last course of the day. Whiskey and wine to finish off the night. They actually drink anywhere from two to three glasses of wine after dinner and after dessert, not including what they drank during dinner. And again, Queen Elizabeth would have two to three glasses of whiskey herself. So they would probably be pretty toasted by the end of the day. God, you remember that scene where they were boxing? where Simon was just going in, he was like, boom, 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 boom. That's how I feel when I drink this whiskey. <laughs> All of a sudden I just got, Mrah. <laughs> it's been a long day. You guys, this is the end of day two. I felt like today was incredible. I loved the breakfast, I loved the lunch, I loved promenading at the park by the lake with the ducks, and then this dinner was next level regal for me. I'll see you guys back tomorrow. I'm actually sad that it's gonna be my last day living in the 1800s like the Bridgertons. Good morning, you guys. It is day three, which means it is the last and final day. And if I think about it for too long, it's really gonna make me sad. I have enjoyed every moment of eating like the Bridgertons, pretending that I live in the 18th or 19th century, pretending that this is my house and my living room. At this point, you guys know the drill. First thing first, tea time. I don't know why, but every time I pour the tea, 
because it's steaming, it just <laughs> reminds me of the steaminess that is Daphne and Simon on screen together. You guys know the epic scene where he licks the spoon. That was at a tea shop. That's where everybody like kind of had their rendezvous and gossiped and when you apparently could sit next to a man, chaperoned and unashamed for that. All right, you guys, my very last breakfast and my very last day in these quarters. We have a fried egg, slices of ham, of course, biscuits. Always gotta serve your breakfast with biscuits and some beans. I love beans, but like, do you wanna start your day off with beans? It's a little weird, but it's good protein. So this breakfast looks nice. It looks hearty and full. Again, this looks like a breakfast that we would eat in modern times. If I were to have breakfast with anybody from Bridgerton, I think it would be Penelope. Mostly because she is a solid person. She's always looking out for everyone else's best interests. She's a good friend. I love baked beans. I, I want to extend me eating as long as possible because that means that I can live in this fantasy world for longer, but Breakfast is over and we'll move on to lunch. Hey guys, I have arrived to my lunch destination in the garden and I have to say it is so stunning. It definitely feels like it's a scene from Bridgerton so I cannot wait to enjoy lunch here. We have a cold chicken sandwich which I am like hallelujah! That is pretty much the closest thing to what I normally eat for lunch so I'm very excited for lunch today. This is my kind of lunch. I could eat this every day. It would not be a Bridgerton lunch without some type of sweet or some kind of dessert. So we have our pudding. The pudding has walnuts in it, so it has lemon zest, and I put some blackberries in there as well. There's no suitor in sight, so I'm going to go ahead and dive on in. I love those. The flavors are on point and the textures are really nice and I love that this is something to complement your lunch with. I left quite the impression on the suitors while promenading in the park but now it is time to head back home for dinner. There's much to do in the kitchen. It is the last and final dinner of this whole adventure and I thought you know what I am going to go all out. Tonight it's all about Queen Victoria and what she would eat. Queen Victoria was known for her appetite. She would eat lots and lots of food and she was very particular. So without further ado, bring on the first course. Soup. My lady. Oh, thank you. Truthfully, I'd much rather a man bring me food than walk me around in the park. So I'm not mad about it. Queen Victoria was known for wanting complicated soups. You couldn't give her a tomato soup, you couldn't get her a chicken noodle soup. She wanted things that took a little bit of time. We are going to be trying the vermicelli soup. Vermicelli actually stands for little worm, which doesn't sound appetizing, but if you look at it, it definitely does look like little worms, so I understand the name of it. Mmm. Mmm. This is very tomatoey, garlicky, and oniony. It's kind of like a spaghetti, but with like short noodles. And you don't have to worry about like swirling it and pulling it. It's just little small little worms. Next up, a delicacy of that time, lobster. In the show Bridgerton, anytime you saw any kind of banquet, wedding banquet, or the social ball of the season, there was always lobster. Literally stacks of lobster. That's just what happens when you're upper class or a royal. Like, you could have lobster by the buttload. They had no problem with eating lobster and crab every night because guess what? They're royals and they're upper class. They had the money for it. I'm gonna enjoy this moment because lobster and crab it's a luxury these days, it's expensive. Cheers. Delicious. So Queen Victoria was known for loving her meat. So the next thing that we're gonna be eating is some good old fashioned steak. Delicious. They eat like kings and queens. The top of the top, the best of the best. Lady Jackie is ready for course four. Just some regular schmegular mashed potatoes. It is honestly so tragic that I can't eat my mashed potatoes 
with my steak. Who just wants to eat mashed potatoes on their own? No one. This is how you're supposed to do it. Like this. Mashed potatoes and steak. Now I'm not eating how they ate, but like, you know that this is the way to eat it. I must say, I think this is something that they missed out on. How to pair certain foods together. They ate one course at a time, which is fine, but I feel like that is really the evolution of food. How you pair certain things together to create those textures, to create those flavors, and they really missed out on it. But it's okay, you know, as humans, we do evolve, and clearly our taste buds have evolved. I don't even wanna move on to dessert, you guys, because I know that that means that this video is ending and it makes me so sad. Today's dessert is a little bit more tame. We have Stilton cheese, strawberries, and then some little crackers slash bread to eat the cheese with. Look at the colors on that, that's beautiful. Ooh, I hate blue cheese. But it tastes better with strawberries. Oh my gosh, I'm actually very conflicted right now. <laughs> Guess this is a combination I never knew I needed. Because I hate blue cheese alone, but if I eat it with strawberries, it's quite enticing. Wow. Okay. The last and final course, Queen Victoria drank. She loved her scotch whiskey. She made all her reverse subjects drink it. So we've got to end the night with some scotch whiskey. Cheers to our very last day, eating like the Bridgertons. Okay, now that I'm done with dinner, that only means one thing. My journey eating like the Bridgertons has come to an end. I will say, the things that I have learned is that I understand why I'm so obsessed with period pieces. Everything back then was so regal, so elegant, so luxurious, and I really do appreciate the art that they put into their food. The downside, however, is back then they did have help. They did have the funds to have chefs. I had to cook majority of this food and it took a lot of time and a lot of energy. So I will say that has been the con of this whole thing. But all in all, I totally enjoyed this. I mean, listen, upper class and royalty, they ate legit like kings and queens. So I legit ate like kings and queens for the past three days. Whoa. I loved it. I got to dress up like Miss Lady Jackie and live my best Bridgerton life. This was awesome. And also, you know, Bridgerton is coming out with a season two, which is the best news of all. So, thank you so much, ladies, sirs, lords, your grace. I think the wine and the scotch whiskey is getting to me, so I think it's time to go. Farewell, and I bid you adieu.